Thank you, Ron. As we like to say, the stars come to after hours, and so Anse Kopitar <laughs> is right where he belongs tonight. Uh, welcome back to the program. Thank you. Thank and you. when I say welcome back, this is, I think, your third appearance on the show, so if that doesn't say at all about your Hall of Fame career, then nothing does, right? <laughs> yeah, it's been a while, though. <laughs> okay. It's been a while. <laughs> so this season has been all about milestones for you. Uh, you hear some of what you've achieved in this, uh, this season. It's not even half over, and a franchise record for games played, franchise record for assists, second for all-time points by a Los Angeles King, 400 career goals and more. Other than that, Anze, it's been a quiet season for you. Uh, what do you got planned for your next milestone? And I think I can anticipate the answer. I don't know. I mean, uh, the, is it the points? I don't know. I think I'm in reach, maybe. Uh, well, so, I thought you were going to so we'll say see. a third Stanley Cup. Oh, that, yeah. <laughs> All that's goal, though, right? <laughs> that's goal without saying. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, listen, we got something brewing here, something uh, special. Uh, the pieces are falling into place, and I think we're showing that on the ice. So um, hopefully we can uh, we can make some noise come come April, May, and June. All right, limited time yeah. because the game went overtime in a shootout. So before we get uh, more deeply into your landmark season, uh, we should address uh, tonight's divisional contest. And should we be surprised there was another close battle against the Edmonton Oilers? You guys have seen a lot of each other the last couple of years. This one was no different. I mean, you had chances in the end to finish it off. This one in particular, I mean, I thought this was in the net. Yeah, I want this one back. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> you know what? It's, uh, it's two great teams going at it, I think. Uh, it's been a lot of close calls. Usually special teams are, are a big difference uh, when we play each other. Uh, power plays, I think they were tied up, but uh, it comes down to a shootout, and they uh, they were better. That, that's just the way it is. Okay, October 21st here at Crypto.com Arena. You played your 1,297th game uh, to take over the franchise lead for games played by the uh, for the Los Angeles Kings. No small feat to get there. But uh, maybe the most impressive part of the night occurred before the game even began when Jakob Kopitar read yeah. the opening lineup. Forwards, number 55, Clinton Byfield. <laughs> number nine, Adrian Campe. <laughs> And my dad, number 11, Andre Kopitar. Wow, the sweet sounds of my dad, Andre Kopitar. You know, he's seven years old. Did you know he was going to read the lineup, or was that a surprise? No, I didn't know, but then I saw a couple cameras rolling into uh, to the locker room before the game, and I figured something something was brewing. But uh, you know what? It's, it's great. He's been around the guys, so he knows the guys. Yeah. He knows all the numbers now and everything. But uh, you know what? To do it in front of the whole room, I, I think he did a great job. That's what I was going to say. You looking at this when you first walked out and then seeing your face in the room, how proud were you to see him read that and get it done with everybody watching, everybody quiet? Oh, it, it's great. Trust me. There's a couple of guys in the room that, that stutter a lot more than that yeah. when, when we do the starting <laughs> lineup, so, myself included. But uh, it, it, was, it was a great moment. I mean proud he's he's a hockey player himself now so awesome. uh he enjoys it and embraces that kind of stuff too i'm oh, sorry you were honored then during the first commercial timeout on that night and there was a video message from uh, dustin brown the player that you <laughs> passed to become the franchise leader right, in right. games played uh right, one right. of the things he said here it's was, was uh sure you're old and he meant it <laughs> kind of as a joke but there's also some truth to it because you have to be of a certain vintage to set the milestones you have this season. And you are making no concessions whatsoever to your age. I think we said in the broadcast last week, you're just as productive now as you were when you were leading the Kings to Stanley Cups a decade ago. And so the question comes from Seth Sampson. Are you immortal? How do you remain so consistent and so elite when most of your fellow draft class has already retired? <laughs> <laughs> that makes me feel old, yes. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it's preparation and uh, honestly, kudos to my teammates too. You, you can't be as consistent and, and you know, playing at a high level uh, in this league if you don't have good teammates. And I've always had Brownie by my side. I mean, now I got Quintum and, and Adrian on the line and, you know, everybody contributes. It's, it's not just the one guy. It's never been and never will be. So, um, you know, I've been just fortunate enough to to be put in a position where I guess I can succeed and, uh, you know, I guess have a good resume. You know, one day, Anze, you're going to be so old that you won't be able to sit down or stand up without grunting. 
And I speak from personal experience, <laughs> Louis. <laughs> but 18 years in the game, in a game that seems to always get faster every year, I mean, how do you do that? Are there some things that you couldn't do back when you were younger that you've had to change in your game, or is it just business as usual for you? I mean, it's it's business. There's tweaks here and there, obviously, yeah. uh, with training, with practicing on the ice, off the ice, you know, everything. But, uh, you know, you try to read the game. I've, I think I've always been pretty good uh, hockey IQ yeah. guy, so... Uh, you know, sometimes when you're not the fastest guy out there, mm -hmm. you got to make sure you're think in a good. Faster. Yeah, you got to think faster and make sure you're in a good position. So, uh, you know, I've been, I guess, I've been able to do that so far, and uh, you know, we'll do it for a couple more years. So here you are leading the Kings in scoring for the 16th time in the last 17 seasons, and you have never really sacrificed defense for offense, which takes us to the two Selkie trophies that you've won, Louis. You know, I, my question to you is, did this come naturally? I know we've talked about this in the past, but you look early in your career, your team wasn't maybe as good as it was when you were winning the Cup, so you had to play a different brand of hockey. But once you started to figure out the 200-foot game, I mean, you've been a staple and a mainstay in that, and a, and a player that I know a lot of players look up to in that regard. Yeah, I mean, you know what? I've been, uh, um, you know, after my, uh, after my junior year in Sweden, I played one full year in Swedish Elite yeah. League which back then I think it was known a little bit more for defensive style of play. So that gave me a, a pretty good idea on, on what that is. And then, you know, coming here, you, you just want to be a well-rounded player. Yeah. And, uh, you know, early on coaches, Mark Crawford, uh, gave me a little <laughs> bit more freedom. But then Terry Murray came in and he was very adamant of, of playing the 200 foot game. And, uh, you know, I think if you, if you go back and look at the numbers, my numbers weren't that, that great, yeah, but early on. You can, yeah, but you can, uh, um, you know, really put the effort in the defensive side of things. Yep. And, you know, Dean Lombardi was huge about that. I mean, we were never a high, high scoring team. So, uh, you know, we, we had to, uh, defend well and, you know, therefore we won a couple of cups too, because of it, because, yep. uh, uh, we weren't scoring a lot even when, when we had really good teams, but we didn't give up a lot. So, so that's what won us the, the, the Cups. So you're in the Selkie conversation again this year, very much so. Um, here's a, a, a comment. It's not a question, a comment, but it's a sample of many that we received when we uh, announced that you'd be our guest tonight. Uh, this is from Aiden. He says, I dislike Kopitar because I'm a Sharks fan, so you understand that. Yeah, but he okay. also says, he's a Hall of Famer in my books, great defensive forward with two cups. Dude is the modern-day Neuendijk Carboneau. Kings fans would riot if he isn't in the hall. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Even if you yeah. dislike me. <laughs> so the Kings produced a wonderful feature called Black and White, and a couple of years back, they followed you back to Slovenia uh, yeah. to see where it all started for Anze Kopitar. Here is just a sample of the guided tour. And that's where my grandpa built this hub, right here. So that's how I learned. That was kind of cool. And what I remember is go to kindergarten or preschool, come home, throw on my skates, and just go up and down and up and down. And whoever came to visit us that day had to play with me. And There you are, a, back checking. Yeah, that was back. Yeah. <laughs> You were, you were a Selkie candidate back then. Yeah. Uh, when Walter Gretzky built a backyard rink in Brantford for Wayne and Matja. Am I saying it right, Matja? Matja. Uh, okay. Yeah. Your father built one for you in uh, Yasanitsa. Actually, the village is Bled, isn't it? No, the, the village that I grew up in is Krušica. Now okay. we live in Bled now. So, but, okay. But they're all 15 minutes apart. It's awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Backyard rink for you. You have Gretzky-like fame in Slovenia. Uh, so that takes us to this picture. This is you with the president, the then president of Slovenia, uh, <laughs> Borit Pahor. A few years ago, uh, you were out for a casual walk in Ljubljana, uh, the capital of the country, and then what happened? Yeah, we, we actually had some uh, a, a couple visiting us in Ljubljana from, from here, from L.A., and we were at, uh, in the capital. And my wife is, uh, was, is still very good friends with uh, his chief of staff before, so... Mm -hmm. Uh, she fired out the text message to, to see what they were doing, and they actually had some visitors in the president's palace, that our White House, I guess. So, um, yeah, and she said, yeah, come on over. So we told this this couple that we're actually going to go and see the president, and then they were like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no yeah, yeah, whatever. Uh, <laughs> Just a regular and then, day. I mean, you saw it on the pictures. I'm in my shorts and my T-shirts, nothing yeah. crazy, right? But uh, they, they insisted we, we go, meaning the president and the chief of staff. So we're 
approaching the the palace and those guys then got serious he's like i can't go there i'm not dressed well da, da, da. i'm like i am in my shorts let's just go say hi and we'll have i don't know a glass of water and then we'll walk out and that's what we did. So they, to this day, they still tell the story, and it's uh, it's pretty funny. So that uh, certainly establishes your fame in your home country. Uh, when you first flew home as a Stanley Cup champion, didn't even have a cup with you, and I understand there was four or five thousand fans waiting to greet you. But then your day with the cup, Louis. Yeah, how how amazing was this response from the fans in Slovenia? Two million people in the country, but you're obviously a huge <laughs> star there now. This is just incredible. And how enjoyable was it for you to bring this to the people back yeah. home? Yeah, you know what? Actually, this this very field is Look actually a that. soccer field, right? So that's unreal. Um, as we all know, back uh, back home with the time difference, the games were I think at two or three o'clock in the morning, but they were camping out on the soccer field. They had the big screen uh, to a point to where too many people showed up and the actual village couldn't handle it anymore because of all the safety reasons and all that stuff. So they had to cancel it, everything. Wow. But yeah, there was about like four or 500 people like at three o'clock in the morning, just yeah. camping out and watching our game. So that was, uh, that was pretty cool. But uh, yeah, I mean, to share it with them, it's, uh, it's the ultimate, you know, you, you bring the cup to, to where you grew up and uh, you know, I guess where it all began. So, um, and the support you get from, all the people, not just from my home village, but from the whole country was, was very surreal. Two million people in the country. Uh, they yeah. weren't all there, but it sure looked like it. 18 <laughs> years in the league with more to come. But there is something that you and your wife, uh, is it Enos? Enos. Yep. Enos. Yep. Uh, surely have thought about and discussed. Louis. Yeah, you know, and for me, um, the hockey school, right? Getting, getting... Well, no, I was going to say, uh, this is uh, your decision as to where you will be when you finish playing. Oh, sorry, yeah, yeah. Oh, where yeah. you want to yeah. reside when you're done playing the game. Yeah, yeah we've uh, pretty much decided we're going to go back home. I yeah. mean, home home is home for us. We, we go there every summer. We feel, obviously, very comfortable. And not that we don't feel comfortable here. I mean, it's been home for, for us for 18 years. Both of our kids... Uh, we're born here. They enjoy it here. They have a lot of friends, and we're gonna miss it. But uh, like I said, home is home, and we're gonna we're we're gonna go and enjoy it. You'll okay, have some road trips. You'll have road trips yeah. back to where you used to. Live. Oh, for, for sure, no question. Uh, we're racing here. I want to get this one last thing in. Uh, you're one of two Slovenians to play in the NHL. The other was Jan Mersak. Uh, he yep. had a, some time with Detroit. Last uh, we heard, he was in Austria. Here is Correct. a tweet from Brian Costello. He's done some research here. Kopitar isn't the only Slovenian. Uh, by blood with a thousand plus NHL games. Can you name the other one? Yeah, Matt Stage. Oh, you got there it. You, you got, got it. it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yes. Uh, born in Mississauga, but all four of his grandparents were born in Slovenia. Yeah, uh, I've actually met his parents mm -hmm. too. They've uh, they visited here when when Matt was still playing. They they came to I guess his away game and uh, we met the family's Matt here, so it was it was pretty uh, pretty nice. Thanks for being with us tonight, Anze. Would have had more time if only you had ended the game in regulation. <laughs> sorry, sorry. One hold against you. Okay, yeah. <laughs>